What's up, everybody? John Delarose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction. I got a question today about whether Zorro, the uh, Z that stands for Zorro, you know, the uh, the Robin Hood of California, whatever you want to call him, is he public domain? And that's a great question. Uh, as you know, I've been doing a lot of research into public domain characters lately. You might have come across my public domain superhero Dynamite Thor, which is live on Kickstarter right now, and you can back. Uh, this is a character from 1951, which uh, is in the public domain and uh, is available for people to write their own stories about without any paying any royalties or anything like that. You And the other part of public domain is you can reprint all of the stories uh, that were in the public domain yourself, if you feel like, and, and publish them and sell them without paying any royalties to anyone. That's what we're doing on Dynamite Thor. We're actually restoring all the colors. You see these vi bright, vibrant colors here, uh, so that you can read them nicely, uh, which is uh, unavailable up until this point. Now, the interesting part about the copyright laws is, yes, those stories are public domain. The coloring work that uh, my, me and my team do is not public domain, so you could not reprint my colored versions of this, and that's that's where the lines kind of break down. And you also could not reprint the stories of my character uh, of Dynamite Thor uh, or anything to do with that uh, without without uh, paying some sort of homage or making some sort of deal with me. So public domain can get kind of fuzzy, and it gets even fuzzier in the case of Zorro. Uh, the Curse of Capistrano was the first Zorro novel, which is a serialized novel. It was published in uh, different magazines under four parts um, and then put together um, and published as a book finally in 1924. And uh, this book or series of, of short stories, whatever you want to call it, um, is in the public domain because anything published um, prior to 1920, I think it's 24 at this point, might be a little later, um, is actually public domain. And since the creator of Zorro died in uh, the 1950s, any claim he or his heirs would have had to it is gone into the public domain at that point also. But there's a bunch of ways around this laws, these laws. And uh, if you notice, Disney does a lot of playing with laws and playing with different things like trademarks and things like that in order to maintain uh, their control over characters like Mickey Mouse and things like that, which which should be in the public domain at this point. And actually, laws about public domain and all that change periodically, uh, and it's usually to protect corporations like Disney. It's obnoxious, uh, but that's uh, what we have to deal with in our corporate society. So Zorro, uh, in terms of the curse of Capistrano and having Zorro as uh, a character in that, uh, is okay to publish. You can... You can make a sequel to the groups of Capistrano uh, directly. There's actually a couple short stories of Zorro. Um, let me see. Zorro, uh, which are also in the public domain. Uh, Timing-wise, let's see if there's a list of the characters, a uh, list of the stories. So this is public domain. Uh, the Further Adventures of Zorro are also public domain. Um, and then some stuff. Then there was a gap in the time period of him publishing different Zorro stories. And so from Zorro Rides Again forward, this stuff is technically not public domain. And that's where it gets confusing. Um, so most people really haven't read any of this stuff when it comes to the character of Zorro and actually are not even familiar with uh, any of the source material. I have read the source material because I'm a big fan of Zorro um, as the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction. Of course, uh, it's something that I am very much into. Um, but beyond that, there are TV shows and there's movies. Uh, the original movie is actually in the public domain at this point, uh, but the later Disney stuff is not under the public domain. So if you're playing with the characters by the way they were uh, characterized in Disney, and this is where it gets really fuzzy and you have to be very careful in their TV show, you would not be playing with a public domain character at that point. So who owns Zorro uh, from that point forward? Um, and, and how does it work? Uh, well, there's a company and they're called Zorro Productions. And if you just go to Zorro.com, you'll find Zorro Productions and they, uh, have the license and, uh, they don't 
the, the, whereas the characters expire and all that, there's different laws regarding trademarks. And you see this, uh, this is Zorro, the way it's spelled out right here. Um, and, and as a name and the way it's done with this whole cursive, whatever, this is a trademarked brand where they can put it on different things that, you know, books, TV shows, games, etc., cetera. And uh, they have the trademark to that. So, uh, and they also control the uh, copyrights to the things that are not public domain. And the way that it works is this company actually, if you license with them, would own the Zorro product and own whatever, uh, you know, other products or, or things that you do inside. You have a work for hire licensing agreement with them. And uh, then they protect the copyright based on that work. Um, so you can approach them, see if you can get a contract with them for, for whatever you want to do and, and do that. Now, there is a company that has a uh, contract for comic books. They're called American Mythology. American Mythology. And they are found, whoops, comics. That's not, <laughs> you got to do that for a, uh, a term like American Mythology. And uh, they're, they're a comic publisher who has a, different, a few different things. you got Casper the Friendly Ghost, as you see. Here's their Zorro stuff. I've never seen these uh, books in any stores at all. So um, I don't think they're that big of a comic book company. Um, I don't know what their sales are. They have Stargate Universe and Stargate Atlantis also. But right now they have the license to uh, the comics. And as you see, they're actually re reproducing the, uh, the 58 Dell comics. These are amazing, by the way. You should, you should read these. Uh, I have not read any of their new stuff, um, but I have read all those, those old ones from Dell. Um, and there's another company that has the uh, novel rights uh, through them, and they they are um, Bold Venture Press. And they've got um, an anthology out, it looks like. Oh, uh, oh no, this is a... Uh, I don't know what this is, but uh, Tales of Old California. Let's see. I don't know. But they publish a bunch of Zorro stuff, um, which is pretty cool. I bought some of these. And uh, the ones I bought are, let me find it, because they're cool. See, this is the type of stuff that if I were a good YouTuber, I'd, I'd do all this stuff in advance. Um, but I, I'm not a good YouTuber. OK, so let's go. Oh, just Zorro. there's Zorro. OK. All right. <laughs> that makes it easy. So uh, yeah, you've got the first book here, which contains that first novel and then a couple of short stories. And then uh, the other no next novel and other short stories are in these. Um, and I have these in hardback. They're very nice. And then they did a book last year uh, by Peter David. Um, Peter David's such a great writer. I need to get this. Uh, I have not gotten to it yet. It's definitely something I want to read. Um, and it's uh, I'm going to get to it sooner or later. But, uh, but they've also had a, a book from him. So that's what exists there. Now, can you write a Zorro novel without... Uh, their blessing and without Zorro Productions' blessings. Well, yes, uh, you would not be able to put their little Zorro. You'd, you'd have to be careful about the uh, the trademark aspect of, of it. I, I'd actually even go so far of just putting probably the Curse of Capistrano rather than Zorro on there uh, and like naming it the Curse of Capistrano 2 or something like that. Um, and, and, and protecting yourself that way if you're going to do it. And I would definitely make sure you only reference these source material things. Now, it gets very tricky in here because The Curse of Capistrano has a definitive ending. And uh, spoilers on this. Zorro unmasks. He's going to marry the girl. It, it's all over. Everybody knows who he is in the whole world. And uh, he loses his whole uh, mystery element to him. So it really ends itself. But then you get to the next short stories in the volume, and he's just masked again, and everybody's acting like he doesn't know who he is. They did not maintain a continuity at all. So it makes it a little tricky to navigate. But there's certain characters that are in this that are not in other things uh, that you can reference when you cannot uh, reference the later stuff, as I mentioned. So it's doable. Um, you might uh, get a cease and desist from uh, this company anyway. There was a, uh, a group in 1996, they tried to make a, um, a play, uh, and they tried to base it on the original, uh, whatchamacallit, the original uh, novel there. And they got a cease and desist, and, and uh, 
these guys actually took it all the way to court. It was in, in for years and uh, they actually got ruled against and that, that play was allowed to continue. So, I mean, they are willing to go to court. They're willing to do it and they're willing to fight over this stuff, which is why a lot of people won't bother doing it because there's probably not a ton of money in this property uh, as a public domain sort of thing, just like there's not a lot of money in a lot of public domain things. But um, you can try it. Um, yeah, <laughs> and that's where it is. I'm not giving legal advice. Uh, I am not a lawyer nor an expert in those matters, just so you know. But yes, technically, the first couple stories are in public domain and are totally usable. You can go through and actually grab the Curse of Capistrano's text and print it and put it out as a book yourself. You're fine to do that. Uh, you can technically uh, use this, the characters from there and write sequels to it, whatever you want to do. Uh, but again, you're, you're going to run yourself a, a bit of a risk here. And these people are litigious. So that's that. Um, I do recommend, like I said, I do recommend uh, supporting this Bold Venture Press. I like what they're doing. They're, they seem to be really into the old pulps and good people. And um, I really enjoyed uh, their reproductions here. And you get them in hardcover, which I like because I like pretty hardcovers. And that's that. Um, I'll try to throw that link down in the description below so you guys can check it out, at least to this volume one. All right, that's it. I hope that answered the question for you. Uh, as to what you do with this, that's up to you. Uh, enjoy yourself. Um, and, uh, you know, I want to toy with Zorro myself. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see how far I'm willing to take that uh, if, uh, if it goes there. But I think it'd be a lot of fun. And I, as the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction, really should be the heir to this, uh, this property, I think. What do you think? Should I, should I be writing Zorro? Should I do it anyway? Or, or should I get a license first? What do you think? Uh, should, I, should I just play it safe? Or should I go for it no matter what? Because uh, this, is, this is my heritage, right? I don't know. Uh, leave a comment down below what you think about that. I will talk to you guys soon. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll be back.